If you watched the previous video, we discussed the many types of cables that we might have, and we're going to discuss those in greater detail here from a installation and maintenance perspective. And we'll also jump onto a Cisco device and take a look at how we can monitor for the health of these cables and interfaces on the actual device. You see, installing cables is the number one way in which we can ensure, installing them properly, I should say, is the number one way in which we can ensure a trouble-free environment as far as our physical media goes. We want to make sure that we're not blocking the ventilation of equipment when we run our cables. That's a frequent, frequent problem that Cisco cites. So the Cisco router or switch or other such device will be rack mounted and then all these cables are hanging down over the ventilation for that device. This isn't good for the cables, but most particularly, it's not good for the device that needs to breathe and can't thanks to all those cables in the way. When we have large cable runs, bundled together cable runs through an enterprise, it's often tempted to stack these bundles. Try to avoid this. This can cause issues for the cabling. And in the case of like fiber, a fiber run of cable that has a bunch of copper cable runs stacked on top of it, there's been situations where the fiber strand in the fiber cable gets crushed. That's not good. Watch out for the sheathing that's on the outside of the cables. We don't ever want that to be damaged. With unshielded twisted pair copper, the second those twisted pairs inside get exposed, in other words, that outer protective sheathing gets like, you know, um, just creased or what have you, there's a cut in it or a tear. The minute that happens, the efficiency of the cable and the chance for errors increases dramatically. Cables can bend, but make sure you know the limitations of the bending that a fiber or copper cable can do and don't push it, right? Just definitely try and do as little bending as possible, but make sure you're well within limits. Be sure to label your cables. Be sure to update documentation about the cabling and before installation, if possible, be sure to test your cables. When you are purchasing cables for a new install, really try and purchase more than you need as far as technology goes. So a great example is, you know, maybe we purchase Cat 6 when we think all we need is Cat 5, but we are thinking about future expansion. So always try and shoot higher when it comes to supporting technology with your media. And of course, always have extra cables on hand. Now, it's important to think about preventative maintenance, too, after the installation. If we go in and we are properly maintaining the cabling, the interfaces, the devices themselves, we'll increase the lifespan of those devices, we'll help reduce failures, and of course, we'll be happier and overall more productive. Now, let's jump on a Cisco router and see how we can check the health of our cable and our interfaces. So here we are on a Cisco router named R1. Notice we're told to press return to get started. And that greater than symbol next to our host name of R1 indicates that we are in the enable mode. This doesn't give us many commands at all. If I use a question mark for context sensitive help, we can see this list of commands that we can do in enable mode. And trust me, that's not a lot compared to the enable or privileged mode. A lot of people call it enable mode because we type enable in order to enter that mode. Notice in my case here, that mode is password protected, which is a good thing. So once we enter privilege mode, we can use a wider variety of commands. In fact, if I do context sensitive help now, you can see that I didn't lie to you. There are many more commands available for us in the privilege mode of operation. Now, what we're going to do is take a look at the running configuration under, and I don't need a pipe, I got a little carried away there, show run interface. We're going to take a look at the running configuration over the connected interface that we have here of gigabit ethernet 0 slash 2. 
Notice that we specify it is RJ45 media that is connected. This interface could potentially support other media types, thus this setting inside of the software. Notice that the speed is set to be automatically detected and the duplex mode is set to full. So we could cause errors here if we were to go in and set duplex to maybe half and the other side is hard coded to full. In fact, I'll do that in a moment to create some errors. But right now, both sides of this media are set to duplex full and speed auto, so everything should be fine. Now, just to make sure of this, before we take a look at seeing the health statistics of this interface, let's do a very handy command. We're going to say clear the counters for the gigabit ethernet 0 slash 2 interface that we're working with. It says, are you sure you want to do that? And I say yes. So all the counters are cleared. To see the health counters, we're going to do show interface gigabit 0 slash 2. And we get lots of great information on this interface. And what we're interested in in this video is this line right here, reporting those configuration settings that we saw of full duplex, auto speed, link type is automatically detected, and the media type is set to RJ45. Wonderful. Now, if you look down here, we get specific statistics that we had just cleared. So one packet came in, and that's great. Notice that there were no input errors. That's wonderful. There were no cyclical redundancy check errors. We would see these errors if we had like media that was frayed and about to fail completely. And we can see that we sent two packets and there were no output errors and no collisions and no late collisions that we might see if we have problems with our duplex settings. So let's create one of those problems right now. Let's go in to the interface 0 slash 2 and let's set the duplex to half. Yuck. So now we have half duplex set over here and I'm betting we have full duplex set on the other side of this link. Let me do a show IP interface brief in order to take a look at my IP address and that reminds me that I have a neighbor at 100010. So we're going to ping that neighbor, thus generating some traffic over this interface. And now what we're going to do is rerun that very valuable command show interface gigabit 0 slash 2. And I'm betting that we have created some errors. Yeah, look at this. I can see it right here. There are two input errors. We created two packets that were too small. They're runt packets. So we are getting all kinds of errors now that we have hard-coded the duplex incorrectly. And before I forget, I'm going to go back in there and set it to full. And of course, we could clear the counters once again to zero out those errors. So if there are issues with the link, it's often a result of the configuration. Notice that when we did the configuration here, show run interface gigabit 0 slash 2, the speed was set to auto. Well, that's great, but what if someone went in and hard-coded this speed to 10 megabits per second and hard-coded the other side of the link to gigabit speed? Well, we would have errors once again on these interfaces. So these tools that I've shown you and to review, we looked at the clear counters command, we looked at the show run interface command, and then we looked at the show interface command. And the show interface command, we love for getting valuable information about the health of our interfaces and the media that connects those interfaces. 
So when it comes to our media and our interfaces, we're going to go through the checklist I shared with you and also follow the vendor instructions for setting up the equipment and really take care of those interfaces and those cables. We also took a look at going inside of a Cisco router and running some key commands to check for the health of the media. Thanks so much for watching.